Let justice roll down like water Righteousness like a mighty stream For our grandsons and granddaughters Remember to remember the dream Welcome to Songs and Stories from Home as we continue to share and remember the dream. When asked what changed because of the Civil War, Ken Burns, America's cinematic storyteller, said simply before the war, People said the United States are. And after the war, people said the United States is. We're living in a country now that might be better described not as the United States, but as the divided states of America. Blue on one side, red on the other. Often treating each other as adversaries, as the enemy fighting to win in what are known as battleground states. In 1861, it was blue on one side, gray on the other. Real enemies on real battlefields. There was a song I learned in high school. Two brothers on their way, two brothers on their way. Two brothers on their way, one wore blue and the other wore gray. The civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s needs to be studied and celebrated and remembered by all Americans because as much as any time in our history, that moment helped bring us closer to who I believe we were meant to be, dreamt to be, a moment that made more true one of the best-known sentences in the English language. We, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, and as was proclaimed at the Seneca Falls Convention in 1854, all women are created equal, and that we're each and all endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The first line in the second paragraph, the Declaration of Independence. Words that also declare our interdependence, our connectedness to and in an American dream. In 1954, in the Brown versus Board of Education decision, the Supreme Court of the United States proclaimed that in this country, separate was not equal. In the fall of 1957, nine black students enrolled at the previously all-white Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the country took another tentative step toward making the American dream real for everyone. Let justice roll down like water, righteousness like a mighty stream. For our grandsons and granddaughters, remember to remember the dream. In 1896, in the Plessy versus Ferguson decision, the Supreme Court upheld that, that racially segregated public facilities were constitutional as long as they were deemed to be equal. So for nearly 60 years, Jim Crow laws were normalized and allowed to become embedded in Southern culture and life. It's thought that the phrase Jim Crow came from Jump Jim Crow, a song and dance caricature of blacks performed by a white actor named Thomas Rice, who performed in blackface in the 1830s and 40s. In the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education decision, the Supreme Court finally reversed itself. And a march toward justice began. In Little Rock, the pilgrimage visits the only civil rights monument on any state capital grounds. It depicts in granite nine students chosen to integrate Little Rock Central High, the Little Rock Nine. Books in hand, outside the window of the governor's office. And in front of the line is a likeness of Elizabeth Eckford. She says she thinks it's a good likeness, yet wonders about creating statues of the living 
because there's still time to mess up. And there was a mess up. On September 4th, 1957, Elizabeth's family had no phone to receive the call for the nine to meet at Daisy Bates' home and all go to school together. Bates, the president of the Arkansas chapter of the NAACP, had recruited them, students, strong enough to survive and not lash out while being taunted. So 15-year-old Elizabeth is walking alone. She missed the call. She's walking alone toward Central High for her first day of school. After reading the 27th Psalm together with her siblings and her mother, the Lord is my strength, whom shall I fear? Will Count's photo of Elizabeth staring straight ahead, surrounded and spit on by the mob, would soon animate a country in a movement. Chaos closed the school temporarily, finally reopening with the help of President Eisenhower's speech to the nation, as well as the screaming eagles of the 101st Airborne Division. Unexpectedly, on October 4th, the Soviet Union launched the first Earth satellite, Sputnik 1. And the eyes of a frightened and bewildered nation turned from Little Rock to the heavens. No longer under the gaze of a nation, each morning throughout the school year, the nine students as ba at, met at Daisy Bates' home before heading to class. In mid-December, one of them, Minnie Jean Brown, was suspended for accidentally on purpose, pouring a bowl of chili on one of her taunters' heads, after which the cooking staff broke out into applause. On May 25, 1958, Ernest Green, the only senior among the nine, graduated from Central High, Dr. King looking on. And in September, citizens of Little Rock voted three to one against integration. Governor Favas closed all high schools for a year the remaining eight, along with all their white classmen, classmates, finished via correspondence or at other schools around the country. Central High looks eerily like my old high school. We even have the same mascot, tigers. It terrified me to think what might have happened if I had lost my senior year. Before then, I was just another goofy high school kid, teenager, senior year, boy state, student body president, all-American football player, scholarship to the U. And that night, in the middle of, in the circle, our pilgrimage formed each day to share our thoughts and sometimes bear our souls. A bit embarrassed, I, I tried to explain what I was feeling and how complicated it all felt. And the group's answer was simple. They embraced me. And together, we got ready to face the next day. In the night has come and the land is dark And the moon is the only light we see No, I won't be afraid I, I, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stay Stand by me, darling, darling, stand by me, stand by me, just as long as you stay, stand by me.